Hello friends, welcome back to my brand new channel SVS Tech and the topic for today is Akka Framework. Akka Framework is used for building cloud native applications. So let's get started. So welcome to introduction to Akka Framework. So in the previous video, we talked about clouds offering automatic upscaling and downscaling. It is only possible when your infrastructure is instantly provisionable which means there are a set of scripts which when you run, it configures all your infrastructure. The services deployed on cloud should offer faster startup and graceful shutdowns, which means that time required to start or stop the services should be quite less, and while shutting down, it should not cause any loss in state or any transaction should not get stuck in the middle. The services that are getting upscaled and downscaled should be completely stateless. Now what is Akka? Akka is basically a toolkit for building stateful applications on JVM. It is written in Scala and it is compatible with both Scala and Java. Akka introduces a wonderful concept of actor-based concurrency. So Akka obviates the traditional log-based synchronization by using message passing. And it is ideal for cloud computing over distributed environments. So Akka is basically based on actor model. Actors are basically lightweight threads, each containing 300 bytes each. And since they are such lightweight in nature, it gives us the possibility of spinning thousands of actors and distributing them across the cloud infrastructure to work in parallel. So an actor basically has three parts. A mailbox, which shows all the messages that the actor has received. Its behavior, the way how it processes, processes the messages and changes its state. And its in-memory state which shows its current state to understand state let's take an example of a card so the number of items added in a card their details represents the state of that particular card actor a most sophisticated term for the actor mailbox is an event log an event log is an append only log where it keeps on appending all the messages that it has received since it's an append only log, we can rebuild the state of our actor by reprocessing all the messages we have received. This makes our actor fault tolerant. Whenever there is a restart or a crash, we simply rebuild all the messages and we will reach to the latest state where our actor was. So this gives us a facility that we are not, not only able to determine the current state, but we are also able to know how do we reach to that current state. Now, how do actors communicate with each other? Actors communicate with each other by passing messages. For passing messages, they use the tell and ask protocol. Tell is basically like notifying another actor to do something, and it is non-blocking in nature. Whereas ask is like asking an actor to process a message and wait for a response. The important thing to note here is that it is not possible to modify the state of an actor outside passing or receiving a message. Messages can be of two forms, commands or events. Command is like instructing an actor to modify its state on something that is due to happen in the future. Event is like asking an actor to modify its state on something which has already happened. Now you can see in this diagram, there are two actors, each actor having their own mailbox, their behavior, their state, and they are communicating to each other by passing messages. Since they are communicating to each other passing messages, messages are the only ways that these two actors can influence the state of each other. So now we'll discuss how an actor based approach is better than a traditional thread based approach. So actors offer a simple way of managing both concurrency and communication. Since they rely on message passing, they are non blocking in nature. There is no state sharing going on between actors as compared to threads. Actors have their own state which they don't share with anyone. And you know for actors deployed on different machines running on different VMs, they can simply modify each other's state by passing messages. So by using this message passing technique, the overhead which was there in the case of multiple threads waiting for a lock and an object so that they can modify its state is greatly reduced. So how is Akka more suited for cloud? Since it's possible for us to distribute our actors across different VMs on different machines, we can use the parallel computing capabilities offered by cloud. Since Akka offers control access to the state based on message passing, we don't need to worry about concurrency issues. No actor can access the state of another actor directly. 
the only way to access data is by us passing a message and asking for it so you know in a traditional threadbare model it was not possible to distribute our communication across different hosts to achieve parallelism it was also not possible to distribute our data across different hosts to achieve resilience so you know we were dependent on one particular host and if it goes down our whole system used to get down so because of these features akka is able to support properties critical to crowd native systems such like location transparency failure detection failure handling you know we can identify on which particular host our failure has occurred and you know we can handle that failure by repairing that particular host as compared to compromising our host system so now we will see how is akka most suited for a distributed environment so as you can see in this diagram we have a load balancer which is responsible for distributing traffic to the following services these services in turn are stateless in nature since they are stateless in nature we can create as many instances of these services as required depending upon the amount of traffic to further understand this example let's take an example of a shopping cart of a e-commerce website so in our e-commerce website we have a cart parent actor which is responsible for the all the cart related operations our parent actor in turn has child actors where each actor represents the cart of an each individual user so each of these individual cart actors have cart information for individual users like the different products that each user have in their cart since these cart services are stateless they can be individually scaled according to the amount of traffic similar to the cart service we can have other services like search service and we can individually scale these services like cart service and search service depending on their individual traffic like they can have five instances for search three instances for cart etc and whatever state our cart actors are holding they are backed up by a memory storage which can be a database no sql or a file system this backing up ensures there is no chance of losing the state or if our instance is down due to a problem we can build it to a later state using this backup so using these features we have seen that akka can be most suitable for our distributed environment since in the last example we discussed the concept of parent and child actors let's discuss it in more detail here the following hierarchy of actors and sub actors is called actor system so an actor never exists alone actors always exist in a system an actor can create as many child as required at the processing time an actor is responsible for health of a child and for handling its failures we can address the child actor by following a hierarchical logical path all the actors exist in a single jvm as we saw in the previous example our cart actor was creating sub cart actors for each individual user same is shown is in this diagram the guardian system actor create has created these two childs and again this foo actor has created these following two childs and again this a actor has created another set of childs now all these actors can be addressed using a relative path starting from the parent actor here we can use the relative path foo to address its child and again if we want to access the child of foo we can use foo/a to address it and foo/a/b to address the bottom most child now since all these actors exist on a single jvm what if we want to scale our application to different clusters how will we do that in an akka cluster we treat each actor system as a member node by joining such nodes of actor system we form a akka cluster so these actors of actor systems deployed on different vms distributed over the network communicate to different actors as if communicating to actors on a local network this capability allows us to deploy our actors to thousands of cloud hosts together once properly clustered it doesn't matter where a particular actor for example foo/a exist whether it exist on a same vm or a different vm on a same host or a different host even on a same data center or a different data center akka cluster make sure that we receive a stable reference to a particular actor for example foo/a no matter where it lives akka clusters exactly know where a particular actor is living over a distributed network as servers are added and removed akka cluster migrate the actor throughout the network in this way akka cluster maintain a healthy state of actors throughout the distributed network akka persistence 
So ACCA persistence is basically an event sourcing implementation that moves the source of throat from a data store to the application and to and fro. It is able to do so by maintaining a persistent log of events as they occur. If an application crashes, it is able to recover the state of the lost actors by re replaying the last events. And if we want to debug a particular scenario, the entire history of state changes can be read and replayed to understand the behavior. And just like actor event log, these logs cannot be modified without a change actually happening. So in this way, the updates are more logical than physical, which means that we know the exact reason of the state of a particular actor since we have the history of the complete changes made to that actor. And since we have the history of all the changes made to a particular actor, we can recreate an actor on a different node in case of a failure. And passivation is implemented using these event logs, which means that the actors which are not much in use are sent to sleep and they are rebuilt as and when they are required. So basically using this technique of persisting the state of actors to our file system and rebuilding them using the event log, ACCA persistence provides us the capability of memory management. It reduces the space cost. So friends, I hope you must have got an idea of the basic behavior of ACCA framework and its various modules. So if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more such videos.